Monday morning, back at work, walked into two complaints. One is I've got a chap supposed to do some painting for me or at least set that up for the boot room I installed. He hasn't done it. I will not blame this bloke, he's a lovely bloke. He's probably just rammed. It's just a communication issue. That's what I will say, I, I, I would think. Um, you know, we've all done it. I've done it before, a bit enough more than I can chew or I don't know, you know. There's no, you know, and it, hopefully it'll come right. And then the, the other thing is, the other complaint is he also was supposed to go to another job and measure and price something for an insurance quote, which is the, actually the scullery job I was making um, here. This and those frames, the doors, this panel I made on the Friday. Um, yeah, he, he, I want him to paint that. And there's some other jobs at that house that he was gonna sort of just speak to the customer about. Sometimes just a conversation just puts the customer at ease. But anyway, that hasn't happened. Hopefully I'll hear back from him today. I'm sure I will, he's a lovely bloke. You know, won't knock him, I won't mention him, won't name him or knock him, he's a good old boy. Um, and these are the joys of having your own business. And like for about a year now, I haven't actually employed anyone. So I did that to eliminate stress. But equally, there's times like this where you just need someone to bounce off. I bounced off my wife a little bit. Oh, hello. Bounced off your wife a bit this morning. Just to, um, just to basically sound things out. You just need to sound things out, which is a little bit like what this is for, really. So I've walked into a bit of a, um, bit of a shitstorm, really. So what I've done is, because the other thing in the background is, I've got this other job, which is these stair gates to this lady that's pregnant. And they've got to be done by a certain date, end of March, I think. She's creeping up now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop everything now. Even though I've got this, I've actually now come back with more work than I had because I might have to get this painting done. And I still haven't, I'm not, I'm not now gonna be doing the scullery for a couple of days. I'm gonna get her job out of the way. I'm gonna bring it forward because there's no chance I can get this scullery done before the end of March because I've now got this extra hassle of this previous job. So basically I'm gonna, today I'm gonna, what I might include filming is I'm gonna go over to her house. I'm gonna measure the stair gates that I've got to make. Got to make four of them might hopefully try and include a bit of how I do that. Then I'm gonna go pick up the wood, the timber for it, bring it back here, and then that's my day done. So tomorrow I can crack on with it. And I've just met up with that, uh, my boot room customer and just explained to him, look, I'm very, very sorry. Hopefully I'll get this sorted for you. Worst case scenario, this is what I'm doing. I'm gonna jump on another job, bring that forward, get that knocked off so I've got more attention span for you. Then I'm gonna jump on your job very worst case scenario, it'd be me jumping on your job end of the week to paint it and um, into next week, just getting that fully finished painted if, if my man can't come through. Okay, when I'm templating or measuring for a job, I like to take in with me a, a combi square, sharp pencil, laser level, a ruler, a tape measure. And um, yeah, really, I just like to document as much as I can on the job. And the board is great for that because you can just draw it on the board. You can sometimes draw it to scale. Uh, you'll see here as well, I'm just trying to sort of create a, basically a series of datum points. So I've marked that as 600 mil. And then this is the point really where the laser level just comes into comes into its own. We're not bothered about lining it through. We just want to, again, use it as a datum point. So I'll measure low down. Uh, I use a ruler for things like this because it's a bit more rigid. So I'm measuring at that 600 mil mark. Um, and, rec and I'll record that, I'll measure low down and I'll record that. And these really are just arbitrary measurements that I can then take back and work out what the angle is. And uh, in this instance, I'll actually draw it on there as well uh, and sort of highlight where I've measured the mark to. And I'll normally draw the laser line as a dotted line. See, we can also use this board um, as, as sort of a square, in um, to square off the post. And then I can actually use my laser level and parallel it with the combi square actually off the edge of the board, which I know is now square to the post and flush with the edge of the carpet I'm removing. And I'm basically using that to replicate where the stair gate's going to hit the plastered wall. Um, in, in this instance, that wall isn't too bad. It is a very old house, but sometimes the wall might have a bend or a curve in it and you just want to know where that's striking. The laser line also highlights that. If, as soon as you shine a laser line on, on a bent object, it will, it will look distorted. Um, but in this instance, my, my primary goal here is actually, I'm just trying to work out the exact height the stringer is off the stair where the, um, where the stair gate is gonna strike. So you see now I've got it completely parallel to the stairs. I can just fine tune that laser and then 
from this point in, I could measure off the off the nosing, and basically record the height of that stringer exactly where the stairs the stair going is going to strike. So again, here we see that we're using the laser level on the other axis now, and I can just basically measuring off the board, which is laying nice and flat on the floor, I can just take an average of how far I think the step is. Um, yeah, like obviously you can use spirit levels for all of this, but the laser level you can just you know almost fit in your pocket. And uh, yeah, I just need to rinse and repeat that really on all four steps. Right, okay. Uh, Tuesday morning. Uh, good morning. Um, yeah, uh, not in the best mood, to be honest with you, because I've still not resolved this paint issue. Um, basically, I've got a situation now where I've got a customer who's not very happy. I've got a bloke who like, doesn't, who's going to do the painting who also doesn't seem that happy. I don't know what to say. I mean, basically, I've got a bloke who wants to work, wants to paint it, because he said yes. I've got a bloke who wants to paint and do he, okay, because it's all been built and he wanted it painted. Um, and I've got the paint, uh, just doesn't seem to be happening. Um, quickly show you, so I bought all the tulip wood yesterday, I then went home, I did these mock-ups, these sketches of just the overall size of each gate. And there's a frame allowance you'll see here, I've put what I know the frame's gonna be, because each frame's got to be scribed into the wall. I didn't, I didn't draw the frame, and I didn't draw the slats for the stair gate either. You can imagine what a stair gate would look like. Um, so, and that's just, you know, it's extra work, I don't need to do it. So, here we've got the, the height of all the gates. And obviously each gate's got two um, styles, if you like, that, be, that give it its height. So it's two, four, six, eight. So then I just get my cut list. I mark A, which is going to be the height, 900. Now they're oversized. If you look at this, they're 798, they're 900. We've done this in another video. Uh, so feel free to check out the other videos. Um, I might even try and include a link. But basically, you get a thing with a fitness complainer called Snipe. We're trying to eliminate that. And the, the easiest way to eliminate it is just make everything a little bit longer. Also, at this stage, we've still got to square things. And we can't square off a rough board. So we just make everything that little bit longer. It just makes our life a little bit easier. But then you've, you've also got to wear on the side of waste. You don't want to make everything 200 mil longer. And then you're left with a bit at the end of the board you can't use. So that's the process of this, really. Right, I've laid everything out. Now I already knew that I was going to put seven bars in, seven symbols you can call them. If you go to week two's video, I think it's two or three, um, then you'll see how I set out symbols for the staircase. This is very similar. The only difference being that we're not cutting a spacer block. I'm going to domino all of this now. Domino all to, um, do all the loose mortises uh, with a domino machine. Probably put two big dominoes in there. And then just one medium, like a five by 13 in each of those. And then this piece here, I shall domino this to the top. And the reason I've done this little extra piece is because it will help over time keep the door sort of straight. And it will stop us looking at the end grain on the, on the top of the door. Because we're going to be looking down on this all the time because it's the stair gate. You know, I've put a chamfered detail on it. I thought that might make a nice little detail and it will obviously make it stronger. Right, good morning. It is Wednesday morning. Um, well, it's actually Wednesday at about 11, 11.30, to be honest with you. Because what's happened is I, interestingly enough, primary school, seven times table, that was my thing. I, I, I soon worked out that if I learned a really hard times table as quick as I could, I'd get left alone. 
Um, and basically, that hasn't transpired into my adult life because, as you can see, I've got these gates here, which I made um, uh, yesterday. You saw me putting those together. Now, look, we've got seven slats on each one. We've got four gates. Quick maths, four times seven, 28. Except yesterday, I only made 21. So as I was gluing them up, I was looking at the pile, thinking, that's going down quick. Why have I only got 21? I've obviously done three times seven. I don't know what I've done. I don't know how I've done that, but basically this morning I've had to come in and rectify that by annoyingly jumping out of process and making an extra seven. And then when I did it, to be fair, I tried to utilise my time-wise. I made these extra bits, which are the frames for the gates. And if you've noticed that the frames, let's take this one, that's the size all the frames should be, which is what these are, because the upstairs gates, which these are, are actually the walls are a lot straighter, but the downstairs gates, 30 mil frame, two and a half mil gap, gate, two and a half mil gap, then I've got a 55 mil frame, just purely because the wall is 25 mil at a level. So the 30 mil will be standard. So at one point it will hit 30 mil, but then it will run out to 55. There's a question of now, what do I do? Well, I've got to paint them. I can't really do that yet because I've got a little glue go off, sand them and whatnot. And also I've done multiple jobs for this customer and I sort of, she did text me the paint color and I just thought oh, I've probably got that left over. I've not really, you know, looked. And I was sure I did because I've done that paint colour. But actually, I haven't done that paint colour for her, so I don't have that paint. Um, it's just she, everything she picks is flower and ball. But all the other stuff I've done for has been in a different, just been different colours. This is obviously something she's done a woodwork in that paint is done on, on her house. But anyway, so I've got to pick up the paint. Long and short of it. Well, actually, it's the long of it in that case. So I've got to pick up the paint. I don't know if you remember week eight was where I left off on this project, the scullery project. So I've got this here. This is going to be a, that's a dead dummy panels and that's a secret drawer in there. And then I'm going to actually have drawers there and there. And actually, wait, they're here, look. And then these, I don't know if they cut to his eyes actually, but yeah, they go in there. So I've got to basically, my next job is to figure out, yeah, my next job is to figure out the width and height of both those drawers and that drawer. Now this is all done on CAD, so I can revert back to my drawing, but there will be slight differences and changes. Oh, and I've got the iron and bin drawer to do. And I know there's slight differences and changes because um, I just did a few things as I went just to give a bit more tolerance on certain things. If we go get the paint now and do a technical drawing of those drawers, those three, three drawers, then I can come in at half seven in the morning and I can just smash on with making those drawers. And I'll probably have them made by half nine or near on. So I won't technically be any, and I'll have the paint on me. So I won't technically be any further behind because I'll probably struggle right now to measure and mark, make and mark all those drawers. Whereas I've got a plan. I don't know if I've got enough material. Oh, I've got loads. Morning. Thursday morning. Thursday already. Mental. But basically, um, obviously, as you're aware, I had quite a few issues at the start of the week. First day back off holids anyway, so probably not as productive as I'd have liked. Um, but that's all been resolved now, thanks. I heard late yesterday um, that uh, the painting's going to go ahead on Monday, so I'll sort of breathe and relax now. Picked up the paint yesterday afternoon, did a quick sketch of how I'm going to make these drawers. Um, so I'm in here now, it's about eight o'clock. Uh, I'm just going to unclamp everything. These are obviously already done. Going to unclamp everything and um, just going to sand. Probably kill a half hour, maybe. Might take longer, I don't know. Right, I'm going to jump on with it now. I might just do a little for what it's worth because there's not. I might do a little bit of filming and me sanding. Um, sounds fun, doesn't it? Yeah, bet you can't wait. Well, you won't have to because it'll be the next sequence sanding. All right, apologies about the noise. It's a compressor in the next unit going, but right, so your first job is to go along and any bits like this, scrape out the glue. And for that, you need a glue chisel, which is a chisel you don't really care about. Um, and I actually purposely sharpen these on the grinder. This round, so you can see, I purposely sh sharpen these on the grinder so they're not too, I sort of get them razor sharp on the on the grind on the uh, stone and then I actually just blunt them a little bit just so I don't dig into the wood too much. Just take the edge off on the um on the grinding stone just a little bit. 
Right, um, and I, as you can see, uh, it's an old chisel I just don't care about. Uh, and if you look, if you look down here now, you'll see that I've, I leave like a little, um, well, I actually left it a bit long, so I'll trim it off, but I actually leave like a gap. Uh, and that's purely because this little iris edge, it stops any future movement, which is likely to happen because it's real wood and it's a, it's a stair gate, so people are going to lean on it a lot. You'll get a stress crack there if you just have to try and get those two flush. So when not given the option, or it's not in the brief, I'm just making something like this. I'll always opt to do it that way, these little iris gaps. The only downside is you have to scrape the bloody glue out of them. Now it's always best, again, take your good glue chisel and you'll see it's just sharp enough to get that off without gouging the wood. Basically sort of scraper sharp, I guess, would be the thing. Just a little bit above scraper sharp. Now the reason you get that off with that is because if you just sand that off, before you know it, your sandpaper is going to turn to, it's going to clog up with all the resin from the glue. Right, this one's a good example of how much well we can pick that up. You can see this little gap here. Little gap in the, I don't know what that is. Could just be, just how it's cut. There's a couple actually on, on the odd one. You can't really see, they're, I mean, they're, they are literally a quarter of a mil maybe. That's really what you're aiming for. I mean, this is probably the, the best example of the worst one. But if you look at that, this is one that I also, I smeared the glue, I, I wiped the glue off. So you, you, you could be mistaken for thinking there's no glue there. But if you just go like this, you're actually surprised. You scrape a little bit off, just because you've smeared it into the grain when you've done that. Now on tulip wood, which is really close grain, it doesn't really matter. Because it, it will still paint the same, but if that was oak and you smeared it over when you painted it, you'd have a texture difference. So that's sometimes what I don't like wiping it off too early. So, I like to treat my sanding like you treat your painting. If you've ever done your painting, you know that you want to do your cutting in first. So I tend to get on all the edges when I'm sanding first. And I'll do the big bits at the end. So you can see, if you just do all the big bits, you don't know then. But if you do the big bits first, the problem you have is when you go through the edges, you might then re scratch or go over the bits you've done the big bits with. Because you, you're more likely to struggle when you're doing edges, and that's why when you cut in, when, you, when you're painting, you want to cut in first, because then you can go up, glide over, you're cutting in any small brush marks or anything you've created. <laughs> you're after nice and flat to each other they're good I'm happy with those um i have still got to sand these actually these are the frames don't need to worry about that the saw marks because that goes against the wall just got to take these um be a good example take these little lines out there with a the sander it takes no time really um yeah which is what i've done in all of that right okay so the eagle eyed among you will have noticed that if I'd had a drum sander or an auto feed on a sander, just to pass them small pieces through before I assemble, would have made that a lot quicker. Because although I still need to do a final sand and de snot, at least everything would be more or less finished as it goes together. That is something I want to do. So they're all prepped. Got to do a bit of sanding on those. Paint room, they'll be done in an hour. That has actually taken about an hour and a half to sand all that, to be fair. It just soon adds up, you know, de snotting and whatnot filming this that's four or five minutes um yeah so i'll um what i'm gonna do is plan is primer on these primer on those that'll be going off what well, i mean to answer it'll be gone off an hour by the time I, I can tell you it's going off it'll be gone off um i'll be down there i'll start making other little bits i'll go up i'll denib i'll get a coat of fire and ball on and then i might make the drawers and go back up and get two coats on then that's done and i've made the drawers but that'll be a 
possibly a tall order, I don't know. Right, I see how, you know, it's the in-betweens, isn't it? But that's the point of having the paint room. I don't necessarily have to spend all day getting that prepped and painted. And if I do, it's not working. If I do, if, I, if all I'm doing today is painting, having a paint room is not working because that needs to be go up and do half hour here and there. Because really, half hour to spray it at the very most. And if you think about hand painting that, well, that's two or three hours, isn't it? Right, anyway. Okay, right, and, um, yeah, all done. Cut, I've cut all my drawers. Um, the the stair gates are drawing in the paint room. That's all been painted. So I'll just I'll just show you now. One draw, two draw, three draw, four draw. That's a bit special. I might show you that that one actually when it's gone together. Yeah. So basically, um, I'll glue this back edge. So when I slide the panel in, that then is held in there. I'll, I've stopped gluing these sides. There's no need. I've got dominoes in there. I've got, sorry about that. I've got pocket screws. You know, all of the weight is then transferred into these edges with the screws and the, and the domino dowels onto a solid drawer front, which hides all of that. Like, that's more than strong enough. And what I've noticed is, see now, because I don't glue them, um, and it's actually not that common that you do glue them. Uh, a lot of people leave them floating because they're all engineered out of one board one one um product gluing them is not a problem because they'll all should you know expand and contract at the same rate um so what that means is i can now sand i can sand every component and then i can assemble and any glue spill out will simply be down the back where the rebate of the draw of the drawer and it goes so you you'll never see it uh, and what i was doing before was I was gluing everything, now I was having to get in there and scrape it out. It's like when you do a dovetail drawer, really. It's, you have to mask and tape up all along the insides of the drawers and stuff, and it just becomes a lot of work. So, And then I'll jump on and do the rest of the painting, and then I'll be away for the day. Not a bad day, really. Quite, so I like days like this, because I've, I've ticked off a couple of jobs, and it's not been hard work. I know I had a short day yesterday, I had a short day Monday, but um, yeah, it's always prep. It's all prep, you see. Right, I'll, um, I'll speak to you in a little bit. Uh, when I glue all this together. Right then. Friday morning. Uh, it's not sunny, but oh, I can feel the warmth. It's nice. Um, yeah, we're actually getting to a point now where oh, roll on summer. Oh, I can't wait. You know, I've been at work for about an hour. Dean had all the doors. All of a sudden, yeah, I'm just going to spray them again. Now I'm going to jump on some bits and bobs for the scullery, uh, which is booked in for the week after. So, 
that's all next week just finishing off the scullery project a lot of that unfortunately is going to be prepping and sanding and priming doors but i always uh i can never film the paint room i probably can't talk for long now because i always leave the radio on and you can't get the bloody right once you shut the doors of the paint room i don't want to open it again every time i finish spraying i think oh i'll do a bit of me spraying um yeah <laughs> leave the radio on right can't concentrate absolutely Oof, mine's going. Right, done all the painting. Uh, I will nip up and give it one more coat at the end of the day. I love doing that. I love just getting an extra coat on there. I'm telling you now, that was like 25 minutes to spray all that. Now I've done all the prep. Anyway, um, I can't concentrate because I've got this. I don't know how many times I've gone on about this. I'm sick of going on about it. I've got it all up here as well. Basically, long and short of it is, at some point in this little room here, I'm going to put a little press for my kids to um, bring that wheel out and they're going to make kit, uh, briquettes, fire briquettes for all this sawdust. I'm going to use coffee grounds, leftover water, um, leftover coffee grounds, water, a um, bit of newspaper, a bit of sawdust. Basically, they'll have masks on, they do it all properly. We're going to put shelves there, they're going to stack them so they dry in the summer, sell them in the winter. Pocket money for them. It's everywhere. I've got a whole empty skip, so I could now lose the rest of the day tidying up. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to bring the kids in tomorrow. Not me, I'll just because he'll you know, be floating around the village. I think he's going to a mate's house, so he'll just, oh, he'll just, you know, I'll just bring me middle, my youngest in. They're going to bag all that up, and they're going to put it all up. I mean, no, they're, they're not. I won't get them. Up. I'm going to bag it all up and I'm going to store it up there. I'm not. They're not going to get on that in the next few weeks. So I can't keep looking at it. I don't know what I was thinking. Um, long term plan obviously is moving all this around that's not going to happen this weekend because I'm probably only going to get three or four hours on it because I've got to sort out Mother's Day as well but basically kids are going to come in work on that today I am now going to sort these drawers out I've got to lip these these are the ones I made yesterday um, this is a tool cupboard for the scullery um, which is my the project I'm now going back on now I've done that painting this needs dominoing and it also needs the shelf pin holes put in. So I'm going to lay that out on the bench, butterfly style. Um, look like I did the drawers yesterday. Might include you in that to show you how, exactly how I do it, um, or just do a video of it, just so you you know got the measuring and marking out and whatnot. Um, and then I will just I might then yeah I've got a few little things I can do actually, just like knock off the job that you know like this sort of things. Um, and then at the end of the day I'll give my, leave myself an hour just in case. Um, and I'll go upstairs and do the rest of the painting. Um, but yeah, I feel positive now. I've just aired my plan. That's going to happen. I'm not sure my kids are going to feel about it, but my eldest has got a flat tyre. He's like 11 years old, he's got a flat tyre. And it's been two weeks now, I still haven't fixed it. So he's walking to school, I feel terrible. Um, and I woke up this morning and thought, I had an Emmy or racer when I was 11 years old. And I'm sure as fuck I was fixing my own flat tyres. So that's something he's doing this weekend as well. Learning how to fix the flat tyre. Um, so I better take my spanners home. Um, anyway, I can off on one again. Right. <sighs> Top tip for you is um, if you want to do dry assembly with your dominoes, take some old dominoes or take any dominoes. Do a couple of little yellow box, little tubs of them. I'll keep these little yellow tubs and I sand them so they're not as tight fitting. They're just like half a mil small. And then you can drop them into your things for dry fits and then you can pull them out quite easily. And then the other top tip is if you do that, don't lose the box because I've lost my box of them. I don't know what I've done with them, but I've got them somewhere. Uh, so I just had to use the pincers to get those out. But it's a pain because you end up, you can, you can sort of mar the board as well if you're not careful. Um, yeah, little top tip for you. Also, I couldn't demonstrate it properly done because I fucked up. But basically, take some dominoes, sand them down, and then they can be your assembly dominoes. Hey, put them in a little box, call it assembly dominoes. Don't lose it. Right, um, pre-assembly dominoes, that's what you want to call it, actually, not assembly dominoes. Um, anyway, um, dry run dominoes, that would be a good one. Dry mows. That don't work, does it? Yeah. You come up with your own labelling system, just make it one that means you don't lose them. That's what I would say. Right, yeah. get on these other half 32s.
Right, yeah, I just thought I'd um, include that. Uh, that was about, let me just check, yeah, 10, 12 minutes um, that was of footage. Uh, so what I'm sort of reviewing and, and demonstrating here is the Festool LR32 system. Ignore all of that there. It's on the bench. So that's going to be how it's how that that's going to be how it's going. There's going to be a draw there with a lift up lid, and it's going to have to start going around the corner. I'm actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this in there now, leave it to go off over the weekend. Then I'm going to get the track saw on it, or well, I could put it on the panel saw actually. But yeah, basically I'm going to cut that at 22 and a half degrees, and then put and glue another one on, and then another one, so it starts to go around the corner softly, um, and. I've, what I've got to do, I've got to pellet these. Annoyingly, I didn't even need to do these because I didn't actually get any screws in there because by the time I glued and clamped it, there was no point in putting screws in. So I've been drilled and done that for no reason. But yeah, I'm going to pellet them. I've just got to find a way of making this stand up. You don't ever see, obviously this will get cut off. You don't see any of this. You don't actually see this because it's inside. So what I'm what I need to do is make it sort of like more more solid on the job um so i guess thinking about it because i've made the drawer the right size for this i could just put solid cheeks on here i could domino and screw some solid cheeks into the back and then my draw that'll give something for my drawer to fix to then when you lift up the lid that'll have a side put another solid bit here but if i leave them all long and don't actually, if I leave them all big and don't connect them, just do a dry run. And when I get to site, I could scribe them into the walls. I think that solves that. It's better doing it now. I just, what you don't want to do is, is take that to the job and just, you know, not know how you're going to fix it. Well, I'll jump on that now. I don't know how clear that was, but I'm going to jump on doing that. I might film it and then uh, show you what I mean. <laughs> too bad at all was it uh you know smash that out really that it just makes my life so much easier you know i'm actually sort of a little bit excited now about fitting some of this because what i've got here is i've got a little box a little tunnel which will house that drawer um i'll screw it all when i'm on the job because i've just done a dry run just to make sure it works so i need to take it apart sometime next week edge band that i'll have to scribe all this into the wall on site you see and then i'll be able to fix it this one again, I don't need to edge band or do anything to that really, but I still no point in fitting it because it makes it awkward to move. Um, then when I've taken it all apart, I can do this 22 and a half degree cut on there. As I say, go around the corner. So really that needs, 
I need about an hour and a half on it next week. I'm going to start adding things up now. Um, yeah, and uh, I'm going to go do the painting on them stair gates now. It's about half three. I'll be, that'll be me done for the day. I won't say goodbye again. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. If you've been watching, like and subscribe and all that. I, I need to do more shorts, really, but it's just time consuming. Um, I haven't always, you know, I haven't always got an idea for it. But yeah, so you should jump on the shorts because that's what YouTube wants. Um, next week is going to be Monday morning, pick up the stair gates. Go fit those, come back here, just get the scullery ready, fit the week after. Um, probably won't be that much of an interesting week. I'll have to, I might start trying to plan these videos out a little bit more. Or, you know, obviously, I'm not really getting that many people watching them, so not that many people are telling me what they want. But also, it's not up to you to tell me what you, what you want, it's up to me. Uh, I'll just do what I've got to do, and I'll But you know, if you've got any ideas, um, just put them in the comments, you know. I've got time sometimes just to run the odd little bit out or just to, or if you want me to focus a little bit more on one thing. Uh, right, have a good weekend. See you later.